I, I'm so glad that God is on the throne. Amen. And children, we do love you. I want you to come up, and if you will, I want you to kneel here, and uh, I want to I want to say something here. Uh, you think that I'm just playing games with these children, but I am not. My heart burns that they will be enlightened uh, to issues of their life that they will come forward and be what God wants them to be. Now, I've got an envelope here. No, wait a minute. No, don't do that. Uh, i got an envelope here that goes back pretty far, really. In fact, I added it up on the machine, and this envelope was handed to me by uh, about an eight-year-old uh, for 46 years ago. So these children that were involved in this would still be uh, up about 50 something by now. Can you imagine that? Wouldn't it be wonderful if I could get a hold of them? Uh, the one little boy, he, and here's what they gave me. They, they, they said, Evangelist, we want to give you a love offering. And so they count them out. And there's the pennies. One, two, three, four, five, six pennies they gave me. And the one little guy looked at me and he said, can I talk to you a minute? I said, yes, what do you want to say? He said, I had some more, but I wasn't going to give you all of it. <laughs> and I thought, now that's just like a little kid, you know, and it's an honest heart, and he really meant it, and uh, uh, not sarcastic, but it, anyway, he, one of them wrote on here, call soon from Billy, Route 1, and that was in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and it said here, uh, this is my phone number, and he didn't put it all on there, but he, he, he had it on there, and it's like 46 years ago, that was handed to me uh, in from Bowling Green, Kentucky, as some kids that I wasn't kneeling with every Sunday like I am here. It's just that they took a love to do what God can do. Amen. And he will work in our behalf if we'll give him our life, give him our best. Our Heavenly Father, we bow our heart and our life before you and before these boys up here this morning. We realize that some of our children are, are uh, here this morning because of uh, maybe on vacation or absent with their mother today. Uh, but Lord, uh, we, but we just pray that you will uh, uh, bless these that are here. And Lord, Maybe way out there in the years to come, uh, they would write something to somebody that they, somebody cherishes and it blesses them. Lord, when I counted this out this week again, it, it just really touched my heart. And then when I added it up on the ad machine to see how many years ago that was, and not, I, I can remember it well. Uh, it's not that I have forgot and where it was or anything. I remember it real well, and we're going to give you the thanks and the praise as you bless these boys and girls as they do your will. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you. Don't underestimate what God can do or will do through it for us. Uh, you know, I had one, one teenager I remember in one of the revivals. He was about 16. He just started driving, and, and the... And the clutch went out on his car and he sat near the back. He wouldn't pay no attention during the revival. It was about three or four services in the revival. He wouldn't pay no attention. His parents made him come. And do you know, I said to him one day, I said, you got a car? Isn't it strange how you can ask questions? Yeah. I said, what kind is it? We talked a few moments. He didn't care about talking to me. You know, I was a preacher, so he didn't care about talking to me. And he said, ah, he said, I, I, I got one, but the clutch is out on it. And, you know, they want a fortune to put it in. I got the money for the clutch, but I, I mean, you know, for the, but I don't have, you know, for the money to pay to have it put in. And I said, well, when can you do that? He said, I can't do it. I, I said, when can we do it? And he said, we? I said, no. I said, I'd help you do that. And he said, you can know how to pull the transmission and put that, put that in there. And I said, yeah, I have done a few of them. 
I said, I can help you. He said, you'd help me. I said, yeah. Now the story is here, it's not a matter of me helping me put the clutch in, but while we were laying under there, there become a drawing tie between yeah. God's man or God's business. And you know, we got that clutch and he went down and bought it and came right and we, we pulled that transmission back and took that out and put that new one in there and put her back together and man, I tell you what, he took off like a streak. And you know, that night he wasn't all the way back to the back like he normal. He was right up near the front. And from the rest of the revival, he listened to every word that was being said. So what are you saying, preacher? I say, be good. Be good regardless what is going to come in return. Because God wants to bless each and every one of us. And thank you for your commitment and your dedication. And you go right ahead, my friend. See God. See God for what he is. God is love. Do you know that? A lot of people think God hates you. God's out to get you. That's not right. The devil is out to get you. God is out to love you. He is showing you love in everything he does. The devil, on the other hand, is trying to get you bound up in everything and trying to cause you all kinds of trouble. But God loves you. And just think about this. This proves his love. Jesus Christ was sent to die on a cross for you. He died for your sins and all the filthy things you ever did. Jesus died for those. God sent him to die for your sins because you could never be good enough on your own. Jesus Christ paid the price for you. That is a God of love. And that God of love gave us a Bible to read that gives us all kinds of things that will help us to grow, help us to learn. When we use the Bible, we learn all kinds of things about life, about what God's like, and what God wants to do for us. We are living way below our privileges today because we do not know what the Word of God says. God loves you. Amen. And God is good, and He's good all the time. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good. Through the valley, and there are shadows all around. Do not fear, for He will guide you. He will keep you safe and sound. He has promised to never leave you, nor forsake you. And His word is true. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. We are sinners, so unworthy, still for us. He chose to die and fill us with His Holy Spirit. Now we can stand and we can testify that His love is everlasting and His mercies, they will never end. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in His heart of God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. Oh, I may not understand all the plans you have for me. My life is in your hands. 
And through the eyes of faith I can clearly see God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart. My God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good. Praise the Lord. message, honor thy mother. Wow. Wow. All right. You got it? Okay, could we stand for the reading of the word then? And listen to what God's word says in these few moments. And I know it's Mother's Day. I was in a revival one time, whenever, uh, in Tennessee, and uh, uh, they kept on fooling around and fooling around until, you know, it was last Sunday morning of the revival and uh, Mother's Day and all these mothers was there and uh, the pastor kept on fooling around and fiddling around his guitar and then he tuned it up and then he just kept on and so he turns the service over to me at five minutes to twelve and I could already see the cars pulling up out in front and went to pick their mother up to take them out for Mother's Day. And here he turns around to me and says, Now, Evangelist, you take all the time you want. <laughs> so I'm going to honor the mothers this morning. And I'm going to, since I used to be a truck driver, of course, back then the one I had was just 13 gears. And, uh, but I remember if I wanted to go slow, I'd have it in first gear and I could just crawl. But if I wanted to go fast after I got up and got my speed up, uh, I could go up to 13 gears forward. And when you got 13 forward, you were moving down the highway, okay? So what I wanted to say this morning, I want to move down the highway of our blessed Lord. I want people to understand that, uh, you know, a lot of things are... Well, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you again for your love. Thank you for the mothers that are represented here. And now, Father, we ask you to honor the word as I bring it forth in honor, Lord, by touching my own heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. And let me share with you, and you know as well as I, there's a lot of things in this world that are just routine reproducing things. You know, you, you, they can run one and... Uh, and then if they want to run a thousand, they can run a thousand. But like, like I was looking here, that uh, uh, mothers are not that way. Every mother is different. And so I, I'm praying this morning that wherever you are as a mother, that you will be the best that you know how to be. And uh, so I, I got to look in here and I said, wow, uh, uh, this how durable it is and how firm it is uh, and mothers are not going to change okay uh, mothers are always going to be mothers now I know I understand that they're trying to say that well we can change that we can make the mothers into dads we can make dads into mothers and we can do this and man can do a lot of things don't get me wrong but Man will never be able to change God's divine plan uh, for our children. And there is something special about our mothers. Now, I know that with our dads, we all have a place. I had a place in raising our three children, and, uh, but it was much different than uh, what Bruce was. Uh, uh, there's a lot of things I don't even comprehend what she did as a mother. Uh, 
I, but I didn't know what it was to uh, get a job and, and, and bring home a paycheck and, and, and see that there was food on the table. And, and, and while mothers are home, many of them, and I know we're out in the workplaces today, but that's not going to change what God's requiring uh, from our, our mothers. And so motherhood, it, it, it's just a treasure beyond description. You can't just really put it out there in black and white. It is not going to, it's not going to work at all. Uh, now I realize today that, and I don't want to say that all mothers are just the most precious it can be. There's mothers that they just didn't turn out to be a mother. They turned out to be a person. They turned out to be somebody that wanted to do their own thing. And so they did not do what God really wanted done. He said, you know, train up a child the way he should go. And when he is older, he'll not be able to depart from those words that you teach. And I would teach. But I, I listened to this and I, you know, if you want to just jot this down because it'll be meaningful to you in the days to come. Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, just write it down on a piece of paper, chapter 31. And begin to read from verse 10 to 31 when you get home. And it'll, it'll be worth the while. Uh, if children uh, have a good relationship with their parents, they're going to go much farther than if they rebel against the things that their parents are trying to teach them from day to day. And some will say, well, I actually know more than my parents do. Well, we all may have got to that point in our life, but that's not true. It's not anything like the truth. And so uh, the relationship will be better and be more enjoyable uh, if we honor our mothers, if we honor our parents, it'll be much, much better. Uh, well, the qualifications of mothers are not all called to be mothers. A mother, are you listening to me, mother? A mother is someone that will stay close to the children. I mean, right from their birth, and I don't understand, but I know God works miracles. Every baby that I go to the hospital to see when the parents say, we, you know, we've had our little, little one. And, and it's when the mothers, and if the mothers don't, start really paying attention to those children right from the beginning, then they're not going to be what we would expect them to be. You say, well, I don't, I don't know, I don't buy all that. Well, uh, I, I do. Uh, they say that the great giant sea turtle is not really a good mother. Uh, she might have the eggs laid and she might be there deep in the sea and might be uh, uh, waiting for those eggs to hatch to where those little ones will come forth. Uh, there's a lot of things in this world I don't comprehend. I can't comprehend how a, 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 a hen can lay those eggs and then after a while, I want to sit on them and sit on them until they, you know, and you don't want to get around them at that time because they are really protective even when the uh, little chicks are not even born yet, when they're still in that egg. And I don't understand it. I, I've watched it as a little boy, you know, standing there and seeing that pecking, you know, going on inside that eggshell. Then pretty soon, wow, man, all of a sudden that little old head sticks out through that shell, you know, it makes its way. I don't understand that, but I tell you, that's not a very good uh, uh, mother to those if it deserts them. And so the, the great giant sea turtle says that they are not good mothers. And so every mother that brings forth a child is not qualified by God to be a good mother. God laid down some divine plans for the mother to follow. And if the mother lives those plans out and trains that child up in the way it should go, then they are a good mother. They say the giant sea turtle will lay those eggs, will stay there and get them to where they are ready to be born. And then as soon as those little turtles begin, it must be that age 
uh, time of the year now because I see crossing the highway sometimes these little bitty turtles are just a little bitty guys and they're out there on that busy highway now I don't know where the mother is but uh, she's let them get out there on that highway and uh, she should have got them back because they're going to get run over and you see some of them are they don't know and you watch uh, and so anyway they say that this mother of uh, this uh, all these little turtles that she brought into the world and they it's said that she'll desert every time she deserts them as soon as they are hatched out and are are, are, are ready turtles then she's gone and leaves them to try to make it on their own and i believe that's the trouble today i believe that's the trouble today I I knew there was a mother that was uh, needed God in a special way because of the children. And yet, she listened to the message. She got up from the pew at the close of the service. She rebelled to go into the altar to get right with God. She walked out, and her life went deeper and deeper and deeper into sin. And you know what happened? The children become uncontrollable. We need mothers today. We need godly mothers today. We need mothers that will read God's word and say, but children, this is the way God said it had to be. And I remember in the home that I was brought up in, and if it ever comes empty up here again, I definitely want to go back up there and rob Pete to let me go in and just look it over and reminisce over the times that mom and dad said, right there, you kneel right there. And you don't get up either. If you get up, you're in trouble. You know, there was a time whenever you spoke to children that they obeyed. But why is that? Because somewhere along the line, the children were not raised that you can't do. And they might have been raised, but they got off track and nobody got them back on track. But I believe this is all in my heart, that we need mothers today that will put their faith in God and Mother God will come before anything in their life. It will be what they want. They want God. So I'm going to really come across here and share this. Children that has a good relationship with their parents will live a better life than those who rebel against their parents. Now you say, well, but what if their parents are not living the way they want to, then I believe somebody needs to step in and be that parent to that child and let them know that God does love them and God does care. And I tell you, in due time, we will see a reward come to, come to pass. Now, uh, you, you would think that maybe... Uh, uh, that maybe it's just, well, if, I, if I'm able to bear a child, and my heart breaks today, I, I'm seeing these, uh, now, now don't get me wrong now, and don't, don't, don't get upset, but I'm telling you, we've got to change this issue about teenagers having children. They're children themselves. They're children themselves. We need mature people bringing these children into the world that really knows that they can actually function in a way that they'll be able to teach these children the way they should go. But if they have never been brought there themselves, then how in the world are they going to be able to do it otherwise? And so what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that we need to really get our families together. Yes, we need, yes, we need dads. We do need dads. We need dads that will get out there unless they're handicapped. We need to get dad to get out there and get a job and say, I don't know what it's going to cost me, but I'm telling you, I'm not going to just get every hang handed to me, handed to me, handed to me until I can't get enough. I'm going to get out there and make my day different. I'm going to go to work and I'm going to work hard and I'm going to do what God wants done. Mothers are special. <laughs> Oh, you listen to me. You don't like what I'm saying. I understand that. But I'm obligated as a minister of the gospel to be the shepherd to the people. That's what, I'm, that's what God's called me to be. A shepherd to the people. 
a shepherd to that mother that just don't know what is going to happen. It just had this baby, and so the baby's taking more time than, than they really want to give to that baby. And so they do something to the baby. And you hear it all the time on the news. Breaks your heart, doesn't it? Well, how should we treat our mothers then? Paul said we should honor them. The word literally means esteem, to value, for they are precious. They are precious. But Paul said, do honor your mother. You say, well, I know, but they're bossy. They're bossy. They try to tell me what to do all the time. That's okay, daughter. That's okay, son. That's their position. They are to do that. They're the one that's keeping care of that home to raise you up the way you should go. Yeah, the dad, he's got his place. Don't think he does. That's why it used to say, okay, I've talked to you several times now, son. I've talked to you and our daughter, and you don't want to listen. Now, I'm telling you what. You look at that clock, and your dad's going to be home after a while. And I'm going to tell you what. There's something about a dad that will take his charge. Don't be wishy-washy. If you say you're going to give them a whipping, give them a whipping. If you say that they're going to have to, you know, go in their room for an hour, don't let them go in there for 10 minutes. I mean, do something to get these children to turn around because they're going to be rulers and that's what. See, I, I, I went to a seminar years ago and it said the baby boomer generation is a different generation. But wait till the baby boomer's children arrive and they're going to be so unruly that they're going to do anything they want to do on their own That's right. because they had the right being taught that way. We're just going back a few more years. It was that, you know, they never seen Dad from morning to night because he was either out in the field plowing or in the logging, working hard, cutting trees down, getting, trying to get food on the table. I, I know because I witnessed some of this myself. But some are paying tribute by showing their mother that they are valuable and they do love them and they treat their mother and they pay attention to her opinion, what she thinks. And so think about this. Show your gratitude for the mother and she's done for you. But listen to this now. The time, teenager, teenager, the time you are 18 years old and children, listen to me now, your mother would have cooked for you 20,000 meals. The time you come into this world as a baby till you reach your, through your 18th birthday, 20,000 meals. See, that's a lot of work for the mother. That's a lot of work. She said, well, we don't do it that way anymore, preacher. We go out and eat all the time. I understand. I understand. Uh, but other services are given too. Life, live a life that she can be proud of. Let her know that you love her. Take time for her, especially as you grow older. And then in Moses said in Deuteronomy 5, 6, and Paul repeated it too, honor your mother that things may go well with you. God is pleased with it when we keep his commandments. God is exalted when the world seems to demonstrate the love of God in their hearts and lives day by day. Mothers, we honor you today and we pledge our love to you as the days go forward. That you will continue to be the mother that you brought that child into the world. And I know that you will not regret it, not in this world or the world to come. If you say, Mother, I love you. And I thank you for caring so much for me. And oh, don't be like a giant sea turtle. 
that will just bring them into the world and dump them off on somebody else. Dump them off on grandma and grandpa. Dump them off on, you know, there's never been a day that when grandparents are raising so many children today, or the foster homes, or the, you say, well, I know, preacher, but, you know, it, it don't hurt for them to be in the foster home. I pastored at a place where I had 16 children that was in this foster home. 16. Half of them girls and half of them boys. And you say, well, I know, but they take good care. Listen, I know this too. That they come to the church. They brought them to church. And I know this one boy, he was raised in a Catholic setting to stand start with and he was just about eight or nine and he tapped the fellow that was and his wife that was leaving. he said I was preaching you know and he said is it, is it hey yeah and he said don't talk now he's preacher's preaching he said no I want to ask a question he said what's he mad about <laughs> and he said well he's not mad he's preaching he said well boy he's awful loud and you know, so you don't know what's going through a child's mind, I know. So mother has to be there to kind of correct those things. And I, I thank you again for mothers for coming out to God's house. And I pray that you will continue to be everything that you want to be. And you can be if you'll put your faith and your trust in the Lord. I'm very fortunate to have been raised in a Christian home with a Christian mother and a Christian dad. They did not play church. They were for real. And I'm, I'm so thankful for that. And if you haven't been raised in that, that setting, then I hope the church can step in and somebody in the church can step in and be a part of helping you to see what God's way is really like. Don't ignore the children. They are very precious. And as we teach them, it's not an easy thing once they've been unruly and not on their own. But, you know, God can come back. God can come back in their lives and they can be different. Good.